In this lecture, we look a little bit more deeply than the portfolio of industries and the various business units that we have, either from our own in our own portfolio or competing with other portfolio players. We look at at how those businesses that we have might fit. There might be some strategic benefits to have them together in a sort of a related portfolio. Or to some degree, if it's resources related to cash flow or whatever, it might be in an unrelated portfolio. But by and large, in a business where we have related investments, our diversification is into related industries or into related businesses, related in some strategic manner. The way we look at that is we try to evaluate across the value chain whether or not two standalone businesses do everything themselves. But whenever you have both businesses within the same portfolio, there's opportunities to share some of those resources, logistics, warehousing, perhaps marketing, perhaps brand. The real test is the degree that you can share these resources in a way that reduces costs or improves revenue, in other words, increases the cost or the competitive advantage that one has by virtue of owning both businesses rather than a single business. The, uh, the idea is that you can enhance your performance, you can either enhance your growth or your, or your profitability, or potentially both, by having these two or three or four businesses, perhaps in multiple industries, but sharing the same strategic resources and capabilities, and therefore be in a stronger position than competitors who only have the one business unit. Not only can you use it to earn, better, to earn better returns for shareholders, you can also be in a stronger position to, to weather competitive attacks by other organizations because you're able to perhaps lower your prices for the short term in order to retrench and then come back stronger later and return to your higher levels of profitability once there's been a competitive clash of some kind. So how do we do that? We lay out. One approach, of course, is to lay out your um, let's see here, hold on. Lay out your value chain, um, and you look at your various businesses. You have supplier purchases, technology, operations, sales and marketing, um, those sorts of things. Distribution and service. You look across your businesses and see if you can find anything that is some sort of a strategic benefit, like you can purchase from the same supplier and get higher benefits. You can use the same technology platform, share operations like your distribution channels or your sales teams. Um, you might be able to, uh, or your operations in sense of warehousing and the like. You, have, you might, or, um, or manufacturing facilities, sharing the same manufacturing facilities, distribution channels or service. You look, and this maps out as you're looking at your various businesses, you might find no purchasing benefits that you could really come up with um, that have, a benefit, have lots of value for you. But at the same time, maybe you have a technology business that you can identify. You might be able to identify things, or perhaps not in this particular example. You're looking to see if you can share uh, perhaps your technology platform of some kind. Um, your operations, though, in this particular example, you find three units where you could actually merge all of your operations. You can close down some operating locations, some manufacturing facilities, perhaps, some refining facilities, and, and leverage economies of scale to be even stronger than you would be otherwise. Sales and marketing, the same way, distribution. So you're really looking at your entire production operation in all these various industries, and you're finding out an optimization strategy of where you can position yourself so that you can uh, either lower your cost or take advantage of some, uh, some market launch or market opportunities and increase your revenue. For example, your distribution channels, you may be able to take a small product that you purchase, and because you have a strong distribution network with retailers, you might be able to push your product, you bought a new um, type of dishware or something like that that was sold in a niche into just a few retailers, you may be able to push that in through your channel and greatly increase your revenue opportunities. So those are the kinds of things that you look for to identify how indeed you take the next step for your business and move into the, uh, the, uh, the, the higher level of competitive performance and competitive advantage. Um, and by looking at these uh, related possibilities and how one can identify these synergies. You also then would bake those into your operating budgets and the like, and you close operations and facilities, and you're essentially rationalizing your whole business, your whole business model, 
as you go forward how you're going about delivering all of your products and services. These are the kind of things that you look for as you're building this re using this resource fit idea to, to absolutely maximize your competitive position, maximize your competitive advantage, increase your revenue opportunities, decrease your costs, so you're increasing your margins and your returns to your shareholders. That's when the parent starts to be, to, uh, uh, to be adding incremental value from a corporate strategy perspective that individual business units are not able to do on their own because they have to do all of these various tasks um, themselves. That's the core concept of this idea. So in the next lecture, we'll dive a little bit more into the idea of resources. What do we mean by that? How does that actually work? when we talk about evaluating a corporate strategy by looking at resource fits across the businesses. We'll do that next.